Having the correct date and time on a computer is essential. Files and log entries require accurate timestamp, but you can also find that certain applications, especially security related ones, just don't work if the clock is out of sync. Now, normally what you would do is to set up an NTP server on your internal network, have that obtain its time from a time server on the internet, and then you would point your own internal computers to your NTP server. The only problem is that network time protocol wasn't designed with security in mind. But fortunately, we've now got network time security or NTS. But how do you actually create your own time server using NTS on a Debian based distro like Ubuntu or even Debian itself? Well, if that's something that you're interested in finding out, then stick around and watch this video because that's what we'll be going over. Now, in order to keep the video as short as possible, I'm going to assume that you already know how to install Ubuntu or Debian and that you've already got a computer available because what we're going to be doing is to install Crony, which is very popular for timekeeping. You can set it up as an NTP client as well as an NTP server, but it also supports NTS. Now, because I want to cover both Debian and Ubuntu in one video and by default, Debian doesn't have the sudo package installed. First thing I'm going to do is to actually switch to the root account. So in Ubuntu, for instance, you would type in sudo, then su, hyphen, and then return, and it'll prompt for your password. In the case of Debian, we'll just use the actual switch user account without that sudo in front of it. Hit return, and that'll prompt us for the actual root user account. Either way, that gets us into escalated privilege, the root account, so we can now actually run our actual commands. So first thing I'm going to do is to run apt update just to make sure that our package information is up to date. So that way we get the latest version of Crony. Then I'm going to use apt install, then Crony. And I'll just put a parameter of dash Y just to save having to put in the actual uh, an answer for the prompt. Hit return and then off it goes and installs the actual software. Well, now that we've got Crony installed, this computer should by default be reaching out to a time server on the internet to get the latest date and time. The only trouble is it's using NTP and we want a secure connection, especially over the internet to be able to do that. In which case, what I need to do is to update the configuration of Crony. So I've got a bunch of commands over here to make my life easier so that I can copy and paste things. So I'm just going to paste in that line to basically edit the chronic config file and then load down. I'm actually going to reference out the default um, servers or pool of servers that Crony's reaching out to simply because as far as I'm aware at this moment in time, as of the uh, actual recording, they don't support NTS and that's what I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste in a new line to actually take advantage of Cloudflare because they are one of a small number of companies that are providing NTS for free. So that parameter at the end is what distinguishes between NTP and NTS. Yes, we are using the server command here, but you could actually be connecting to multiple servers. Uh, just because of the way that NTS works, you'll probably connect to one particular computer, maybe a load balancer or something for that initial a handshake, but as part of the actual setup process, you could then be handed off to a completely different server. Either way, we've now got that line in to make our connection more secure. But by default, Crony doesn't actually provide an NTP server service as such. You've actually got to make that available. And we do that by adding in an extra line to allow access to the NTP service using that line, which allows access from that particular subnet, for example. So I've made some changes to the config file, so I'm going to save those. One thing I'm going to double check first is just the actual setup for uh, NTP, just to make sure it's working. So put in time date, CDL, and status. What we're looking for is that to see if the NTP service is active. If it's not, then you'll want to run this command here. So I'll just paste that one in. So that's time date CDL set NTP to true. Now, 
in this case for me it's already active so i don't need to do that but now that we've made our config change we need to restart the crony service so we'll run system ctl restart crony hit return and now we should have actual uh, connectivity using mts so now that we've got crony installed and reconfigured we want to check to make sure that this computer is actually getting accurate time in other words we want to make sure that its clock is up to date before we even consider using it as an actual ntp server for our own internal network and as before i'm going to copy and paste some commands across just to make my life easier and these are ways you can actually check so chronic sources dash v so in this particular case we've only got one server that's all i've set up for chronic to use what we're interested in in particular is that column stratum that tells you basically how accurate the clock is the lower that is the better in this case we're getting a stratum level of three over on the left hand column we've got the actual mode of connection plus the actual state of that connection and that mode well in this case it's a server mode because we've set up crony to connect to a time server on the internet crony here is acting as a client and it's talking to a server on the internet and it's going to defer to that server for its actual date and time if you're going to be setting up redundancy within your own internal network then you'd have configured these as peers so they would peer with each other and they would synchronize their clocks together so in that case you would see an equal sign for example but typically when you're just running it as a client that's what you'll be seeing is that um correct over there on the left now when you've actually got multiple servers you'll get various source states typically you'll get one that says an asterisk or star in other words that's the server that it prefers that's the one it's picked out to sync its time to if you're having problems you'll see a question mark where basically it just couldn't connect to it for example or maybe the, the actual stratum is just too high or something but there's there's various other modes but the other typical two modes we see other than the the combined one now just to give you some uh, perspective i've got this computer here if i run that same command on this one i didn't really do anything with the config of uh, ntp on this one but this one is connecting to an absolute ton of ntp servers or at least it's trying to see so you're seeing different um actual states here the actual uh, server uh, mode is always the same because it's acting as a client but the actual state varies so it as it turns out it's picked out this one here where we've got our star here so this is one presumably belonging to canonical i have no idea who fluffykins is but you know whatever i mean it's actually connecting to this particular server now interesting enough this is a pop os computer and they actually include a lot of their own uh, time servers in there so you'll see them at the bottom there so there's quite a bit of a mixture but it's usually that what you're looking for the correct and then the star because that tells you which actual server that you're actually syncing to in any case there are quite a few other actual commands you can get a bit more detail about this connection that we've got here gives you quite a lot of info there and there's also if you want you can have a look at the actual source stats again there's only one server so we're only getting details for that but what i am particularly interested in is this command here so if i run that command it's actually showing me a mode of nts that is what i want to see because this particular computer should be connecting to a time server on the internet using nts if it doesn't show me that then that's no good it's probably connected using ntp and one thing to point out is i did actually have to open up the firewall to allow this because the connection uh, for NTS it's it's a two-phase process it uses TCP port 4460 for that initial connection then it uses the traditional UDP port 123 so I had to allow the actual computer access to NTS over the internet basically for this to work now if you have a look at this one in comparison paste that in on this one I'll have to run sudo for this one simply because it's, it requires elevated privileges. But you can see this one's trying to connect to several actual computers, uh, but the mode is blank. There's nothing there. In other words, that's just your typical NTP connection. 
These ones for System 76, the company behind Pop OS, interestingly enough, are actually NTS connections, but this computer doesn't have access to NTS servers, hence why it hasn't been able to connect to them. That's why we're getting that uh, correct and the question mark up there to the top. But either way, at least what I know is that this computer, uh, NTP server that we're setting up, is now actually getting its uh, time using NTS over the internet. Now, if you're interested in finding out how it's doing as a server, there's a couple of commands you can run. So this is one to ask for the actual server stats. And this gives you details. In those particular cases, you'd be interested in NTS-KE connections accepted, for example. Uh, there's also a clients parameter that you can run as well. And that gives you a bit more detail about the actual clients and how they're connected. But obviously I'd have to set up some clients to actually point to this actual NTP server for this to actually be of use. Now it always makes sense to run some sort of personal firewall on your actual servers because, well, a normal firewall, a dedicated firewall, it has no control over connectivity between computers that are directly connected to each other. So I like to use UFW on complicated firewall, for instance. In which case, I'm going to have to update UFW to actually allow access to this actual server. Now, initially, it's only set up to run as an NTP server, but further down the line, I want to be able to use it as an internal NTS server as well. In which case, I do need to add some additional lines to allow access. So, again, I'm just going to copy and paste in some lines just to make my life easier. Let's just hit return and then have a look at the actual status that we've got here. So basically at the moment, I'm restricting access to port 22, so SSH access from my management computer. But I also want to use this actual NTP server that we're setting up as an NTP or NTS server, in which case I'm going to allow for now access from that management network over to the server. So we need to allow UDP port 123 for the NTP access. And we also need to allow TCP port 4460 access for NTS. So we've now got our NTP server set up and it should be accepting NTP connections, but obviously we've got to point our actual clients at that actual computer to get their time from, rather than going out to the internet. So this particular computer I've got here is running Pop OS, and I've already jumped ahead and installed Crony on this one because the process is just the same as what we did for the server. But again, I do need to edit the configuration file so I'm just going to use nano to edit that. Bear in mind, I am using the sudo command because we need elevated privileges for these sort of things. So I'm going to scroll down and this particular one, or at least this distro, it's pointing at quite a few computers and I'm just going to comment those ones out because I want to point to my own internal server. Now I've got choices. I mean, I could point at the IP address. I could point over to the actual fully qualified domain name. With this one, we're just bypassing that extra step of having to do DNS resolution. If anything happens to the DNS server, well, I won't have a problem when it comes to NTP. So I'm, I'm quite happy to just point it to the IP address. But having said that, using the FQDN does have the benefit of that. Well, if somewhere down the line I wanted to replace that particular NTP server, in other words, give it a new IP address, for example, well, it's a lot easier for me to be able to do that if I'm using the fully qualified domain name, but it's entirely up to you how you want to do this. Now, we're not going to be using this as a server, so that's basically it. So I'm going to save that config. I'm just going to double check again that NTP is active. I mean, I know it already is anyway, as we saw that earlier on, but as you can see, it's saying that the NTP service is active. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to restart the crony service. And then we're going to run a check just to make sure that we are actually getting a connection to that NTP server and we're actually syncing to it. So at the moment, you can see it's actually showing the name. Even though I've put the IP address, that's just something to point out. It actually does resolve the actual name as part of the actual command, which is quite useful, I suppose. But you can see it's picking that one out as the actual uh, preferred NTP server. And you can see it has already synced to it pretty quickly. 
So it's running in server mode and it's picked that out as the preferred server, but we've still got all of these other servers that it's trying to connect to, which come as part of the actual Pop! OS, um, actual distro. Now, there is a way to actually remove those though, if you're particularly interested in finding out how. Now, this computer, which I've set up to talk to my own internal NTP server, is actually trying to connect to several time servers on the internet, ones which belong to System76, in other words, the people behind OS. But although I only actually configured it to point to my own internal server, somehow it's, it knows about these other actual servers to, uh, to use. Now, because I don't want to use those servers, I mean, granted I am actually blocking access to them on the actual firewall, it really makes sense to remove them. And the reason they're there is because there are other ways to configure Chronic. In this particular case, what we'll find is, if we go and have a look in this folder here, there is a file, system76-nts.sources, which actually contains a list of servers that we were seeing. Now, as I said, I don't want to actually use these servers, so it's best really that I actually remove the file, but that is a, another way that you can actually configure Crony if you want to. So because I've removed that file, I need to restart Crony. So now what it should do is only be using my own internal server. So there you go. So this is something to bear in mind if you know you've got a computer that's trying to connect to servers and you're not sure how it's actually set up to do that. Typically you'll find it's because there's a file within that slash etsy slash crony slash sources dot d folder. Now, what we've set up is an NTP server for our own internal network, but you can actually configure Crony to act as an NTS server. And that makes a lot of sense if you've actually got computers on your internal network, which also supports NTS. The only catch is the certificate because NTS does use a TLS certificate. Now, usually you won't be getting certificates for your internal computers from a public certificate authority, but if you've got your own internal certificate authority, which your own computers do actually trust, then you can actually set up a certificate for Crony, just like you would for an actual web server. And then you can actually have your own internal computers using NTS as well. Bear in mind that in order to be able to do that, the actual internal server itself does need to be using NTS when it's connecting to the actual internet server. And in our case, this one does. Now, how you actually set up a certificate authority and hand out certificates really depends on what you're using. So for instance, I've got a video that you can take a look at if you like, which shows you how to use OpenSSL to set up your own internal certificate authority and how to actually create certificates on that. Now, in this case, I've jumped ahead and actually created a certificate and a key for my NTP server. And I've copied them across where you want to put them is in the slash var slash lib slash crony folder. But these were put here by root. So I need to make some changes to the actual ownership as well as the actual permissions because crony needs access to these. So I'm going to paste this line in here, basically change the ownership over to crony and to also set the actual permissions on it. So that does that for the actual key. I need to do the same for the certificate itself. So if we have a look in that folder now, I've basically reduced it down to read-only access because that's all Crony needs. And that takes care of that part of it. We then need to edit the configuration file. So what I need to do is to add some additional lines in here. I need to tell Crony about these actual files. I need to tell it where to find its key and where to find its certificate. So just two extra lines in, in there. Now, while I'm here, I'm going to look for an additional line, this one here. This is basically to tell uh, the actual system to, as it says, to save the NTS keys and cookies. The idea is when you're starting up from cold, you can get that information from here. Uh, but now that I've made those changes, I'm going to save that. 
And then what we're going to do is to actually restart Crony. And then I'm just going to double check to make sure that it's okay with those files. Yeah, so it's saying it's active and it's running. So next thing to do is to, well, set up an actual client computer to connect to this one using NTS. Now, this computer that I've got here, which is running PubOS, does trust the actual certificates from the certificate authority that I've got, but only through the web browser. Now, if I want to actually get Crony here to actually trust the certificates, I could make configuration changes to Crony itself, but I'm just thinking ahead in terms of future proofing. What I could do is just get the operating system itself to trust them. So to do that, I'm going to create a new folder on this computer. So that's slash user slash char slash CA dash certificates slash extra. And then I'm going to copy across the root CA certificate for my internal network to that folder. And then I'm going to give root the ownership of the actual file. Then what I then need to do is to update the actual configuration file here. So I'm just going to edit that with nano and you can see there's a lot of certificates here that it, it basically uh, trusts, more, more specifically certificates from certificate authorities, but I need to tell it about my own. So I'm just going to paste in that extra line. So I'm telling it to look in the extra folder or root CA-CRT. So we'll save that. Then I need to update the actual certificates on there. So I'll just run that command update CA-certificates. So it said it's added one in. I'm just going to run that again because it was a rehash warning it just said there. I don't know if it uh, has any particular relevance to be honest, but usually whenever I run it again, I don't get that. In any case, what I then want to do is run a check to see if we're actually trusting this certificate. So we're going to use Crony to actually try and connect to our actual server. Now, the one thing to point out is because we're using uh, TLS certificates, I do have to point to the fully qualified domain name. I'm only interested in getting one connection there. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. It's coming back and says, it's it basically, it's not giving me any errors. Uh, if I'd run that where it didn't actually trust the certificate, it would come back and actually say, I do not trust this certificate. So that's good to see. Next thing I want to do is, well, I need to update Crony now. So we'll edit the configuration file for that. Now, yeah, I put that in using an IP address, but this is not going to work when it comes to using NTS. So I'm just going to take that line out and I'm going to put in a new line in. Oops, I'm going to cut it. I wanted to copy it. So I'm going to paste in the new line, which now points to the fully qualified domain name and also tells Chronic to use NTS. And then we're going to restart Crony. And I've got to put the sudo command in. So then we're going to have a check over our sources this time again. So yep, it's synced to our actual server. So we'll run a check and see if this time it's actually seeing what the mode is. So this time you can see the mode is NTS. So that's a good thing to see because it means that our actual client computer is connecting to our own internal server using NTS. Now, one thing I'll point out is, is that there's times I've done this and the mode's just blank, it didn't work. But a quick fix I found is to just reboot the client and that usually fixes the problem. But either way, we've now got an internal computer connecting to our internal NTP server, but it's using NTS. And our actual NTP server itself is connecting out to the internet using NTS. Well, the one last thing that I want to do is 
just to take a look at things from the service perspective. So I'm going to run two commands, the same ones I was showing before. So this one will give us some service stats. What's particularly interesting is this one here, NTS-KE connections accepted. So it's saying that there's been three connections. And then this one here, authenticated NTP packets, and it's got 16. So in other words, the server is confirming what the client said as well, that we're using NTS. So that's what we're getting here. That's what we're interested in. If we're using NTS up here, this is more to do with the NTP side of things. And then this command here, we run that one. We've only got one client. Uh, it can't do a reverse lookup on this IP address because it's a client computer. Normally I'm only storing the FQDNs in the DNS server or for actual servers. But what's of particular interest here is this column NTS-KE. And again, it's confirming what we've got up here. So again, I'm, I'm confirming basically that NTS is working between both the client computer and the actual server. Now, if you find this video to be useful, then do consider subscribing to the channel, as that would really mean a lot to me. But it's also a good indicator to let me know how videos like this are helpful to people such as yourself that are watching. In which case, thank you. On the other hand, if you're not ready for that level of commitment, then I'd really appreciate it if you could press the like button, because that way that will help to get the video out to other people that might find it useful as well.